Rolling Kitty. Here is Kitty. How are we doing, gang? Oh, lovely, gorgeous, gorgeous. We've got that almost uh, shiny floor 80s game show vibe here, haven't we? As you can hear, we've got a live studio audience. No, we haven't. We've just piped it in for, for today. Aya, how are you doing, treasures? How are you doing? It's me, it's Kitty. Yeah, it's me. You remember me, don't you, Enid? God knows who's watching this and where they're watching it. But welcome to another episode of Calling Kitty. My name is Kitty, Kitty Cassis. Cassis, like the dark, sweet, viscous, slightly sickly liqueur. Only tolerable in very small doses. Aya, aya, cock, how are you doing? Are you all right? Do you know what? I'm going to wet me whistle already. What are we drinking? Mm. A bit of AM ASMR for all me perverts out there. I've got a few of them. Fred normally tunes in, doesn't he, on the YouTube at this point. Keep your hands where we can see them, please, Fred. Thank you. Um, I am drinking um, a raspberry Kool-Aid today with uh, the usual Barocca and a little bit of Pepto-Bismol uh, sprinkled in there as well. And today what I've actually done is I've just got a bit of cough syrup as well and just swirled that in so that is that's lovely that's going to keep me going that today welcome to another little episode of calling kitty this is an audio podcast but it's got a visual element and i implore you to seek out the visual element on youtube you can click in the link there um because i'm looking gorgeous as i always do right and you're looking gorgeous too treasures all right i also I'm not going to lie, I've been looking at my own YouTube channel. I have, because I like to trawl through the comments every now and then and just see, um, you know, who, who's um, wishing terminal diseases upon me. <laughs> uh, and just being, you know, uh, in, in lots of ways quite supportive by, by commenting in the first place, but really wishing me dead. Um, it really does just kind of lift the spirits on a Thursday morning. But one thing that I would suggest you do is get in touch um, and and, and uh, get in touch on the comment section, but also go and check out my YouTube um, videos because normally when I think that I'm not being filmed, I can be seen um, well doing all sorts really. Okay, and that could be behind a paywall. I always do say that, um, but really, just my reaction when I think that I'm not being filmed is—I mean, it tickles me. So I don't know why it wouldn't tickle you. Honestly, get, go and have a look. You know, if you've got, got now else to do, a lot of these kids these days, you know, they're not watching terrestrial TV. What they're doing is they're—they're they're on YouTube. They're just watching films on you, just watching bits on YouTube. The average attention span of a 12 to 17-year-old is approximately five seconds. And so I'm really trying to corner that market, okay? But obviously I do go around the houses a bit, so, you know, they're hanging on a little bit. But we're getting there. It's a muscle that you've got to be able to work, isn't it? Um, calling Kitty today is really dedicated to those courteous drivers out there. I have been on the streets, gang, in my little micro, uh, my Nissan Micra, and... Some of the behaviour on the roads, I don't know what it is. I mean, listen, sometimes we're all in a rush, all right? I, I realise that. Sometimes, you know, if I'm going to Twitchy Pete's meat raffle, I do get a bit, round that roundabout near the lay-by, I do get a bit impatient. But on the whole, I'd love to know what kind of drivers you are out there, all right? The calling kitty listenership, you know, the community, all 17 of us. How, how are we driving? You know, are we... Are we generous are we letting people in uh, uh, you know letting people out letting people in um are we giving way are we are we saying go on treasure you go go on f f are you flashing in the best way or are you so close to the car in front that you're actually bumper to bumper and you won't let anybody out no it doesn't matter if you're in a rush or not I, i've seen a lot of that there's a lot of um just a lot of bad attitudes on the road treasures and i would Say to you, if you're listening to this, I mean, I hope most of you are taking public transport because that is my demographic. Um, you've got to be letting the you've got to be letting the buses out. You've got to let the bus out. That's what I, that's what I, I always try and do. Obviously, if I'm on my way to Enid's or Sheila's or Marion's, 
and I, I know that they get very panicky if I'm even one minute late. Normally, I've got to be early for their appointments when I'm going mobile hairdressing, you know. Um, if I will just put sometimes, um, I'll put a, 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 it's not a blue light, it's a purple rinse light on top of the roof of my car because then people know that it is an emergency and I, I do have to get to, I have to get, make sure I can get somebody out of the dryer before they burn to a crisp. Now I, I do have to pull that card occasionally, but if you're out there and you're on the roads today, be courteous. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you come across a zebra crossing, Slow down. Let that person cross. Let's all look after each other, shall we, treasures? That's all, that, that's all I'm asking. Maybe somebody needed to hear that today. Who knows? As always, you can get in touch with me. You can get in touch with me on all the platforms. We've got loads of um, missives. I've got loads of... Um, I've, 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 I've got a pigeon carrier that's actually arrived with a couple of messages in it as well. Because obviously people find different ways to get in touch. I've also got a facsimile machine. Um, I actually bought that at a car boot last Friday, um, and that is that's fired up quite nicely. And I've got, I mean, I've got a couple of uh, things that have come through from um, Deloitte from the 1980s. It looks like it's maybe got stuck in the fax machine memory. Um, so I'll have a look, at, maybe have a little bit of a hacker situation and have a look at that later. Um, but you can get in touch. Click the link in the show notes. You can go to Hiya, It's Me, Kitty. That's H I. Y-A-I-T-S-M-E-K-I-T-T-Y dot com. Um, and there's a little box there on my uh, website and it says, uh, drop me a line, cock. Um, now, some people have taken that literally and I have actually received penis pictorials. Now, that is not something, unless you need me to diagnose something, that is not something that I am, I'm not, I'm not welcoming those. So they are, in fact, at that point, unsolicited. Um, I will have just a general call out for, for, um, genital mail-ins. We'll do that at some point. That's going to be the evolution of this podcast probably, but you can get in touch, get in touch with any dilemmas you've got. If you've got any problems, if you want to maybe drop some pearls of wisdom on, on us, this community that we're building here, you'd be very welcome to do that as well. So you can get in touch on the, um, Instagram, you can get in touch on the Facebook page, um, obviously you could get in touch on OnlyFans. That is a little bit of a one-way street, I'll be honest with you. I don't like much traffic coming the other way. Um, but all of my socials, hiya, it's me, Kitty, and drop me a line, all right? Now, I'm, I'm just getting a feeling, there's just a, there's a feeling in my scalp today uh, that somebody is trying desperately to get in touch and reach out. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm never wrong, am I? I'm never wrong. Bloody hell. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, it's like, uh, hello? Has it gone through? I th you're through, Treasure. I can hear you loud and clear. Who's oh, calling? Hi, it's uh, Carl Kazana, the comedian. Carl Kazana, the comedian. Hey, uh, hi, is that Kitty? It is Kitty. How are you, Treasure? Oh, um, yeah, I'm, very, I'm well, thank you. Yeah, how, how are you? Oh, I'm absolutely blasting today. I'm having a great day. Uh, the sun has come up and my arthritis isn't as bad as it usually is. <laughs> so how are you, Treasure? Yeah, good. Just done a bit of driving. And I don't know about you, but the, some, of the, some of the absolute jokers on the road these days, it's, absolute, it's, a, it's disgusting. Now, it, it is so weird that you should say that, Carl, because I have just been making the same observations and it seems like everybody is probably on ketamine, would you say? Yeah. That that's crazy. I mean, I suppose we're just sort of connecting that in that way. Um, yeah, I just I've just been out driving, and you know me, I I like to be a courteous driver. That I don't know if you feel the same or not, but I I try yeah. and be as courteous as possible. Um, and there's all these people; they just don't seem to know the lay of the land, like how the roads work, like on the Absolutely. motorways. You know what it's like on the motorways. You've got the three lanes, haven't you? You've got beginner, intermediate, and expert. Absolutely, everyone now, knows that. Precisely, and I, like I'm, I'm not a new driver by any stretch, but I, I'm not an old hand either. So I tend to stick in the middle. And the amount of people who just don't seem to get how it works, they get angry with me. It's not, yeah. it's, it's horrible. But I mean, yeah. there is a saying, isn't there? Stay in your lane, and that does actually mean that until you do get to about the age of, I'd say, I was probably about sixty when I moved out of that middle lane and into the advanced, what we'll call it. Yeah. But it seems like maybe the young people have not got that memo. Do they not get the highway code anymore? I, I suppose not. I mean, I'm only like nineteen, so I, you know, I've, mm. I've progressed quite quickly into the middle lane. But um, yeah, yeah. It's just a lot of people just. 
and not sticking to the speed limit either. You know how motorways you've got the letter and then the speed you're allowed to do in it. So like M25, yeah, M Road, and yeah, obviously 20. you can do so, twenty five miles an hour. That's right. Yeah, hour, that's right. Yeah, exactly. And the, I, feel, I feel like I'm the only one sticking to it, if I'm honest. I mean, it couldn't be any clearer, could it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, like, I mean, I, listen, I know the education system is not what it once was, you know, back in, back in my day. Um, but, I, I mean, it, I don't know how we get the message out there. I, I, all we can do is just keep doing what we're doing, I think, isn't it? it and, yeah. um, I mean, I seem to see a lot of accidents in my rear view mirror. You know, um, and, and that's, that, is, that is something that I can only put down to other people's um, negligence, um, you know. I have actually seen you, Carl, uh, negotiating and manoeuvring your way around a canteen with a tray full of hot pot and balancing a drink and a carton and um, a, 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 a bowl of jelly. And yeah. um, I, can, I mean, I, I can only say that if you take that same behaviour out onto the roads, you're a brilliant driver, Cuck. Thank you very Yeah, I mean, very much so. In the canteen, it's signal, mirror, manoeuvre. So you, mm -hmm. you take your tray, have a quick look around, you identify to the other canteen users your intentions, and then you yeah. walk around. One time, I slipped on some orange juice. No, no, I didn't. Sorry, I'm misremembering. One time, my um, partner at the time, she slipped on some orange juice. Her tray went flying. I sp span round, stood up, caught her, grabbed the tray, and then grabbed all of the items onto the tray. And that is that was the inspiration for a scene in the first Spider-Man film by Sam Raimi. Uh, well, did I get credited? I, I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't going to mention it because I knew it was a bit of a sore spot that you hadn't been credited. Yeah. Obviously, everybody who was there that day knew, especially when they went to see the movie. Hang on a minute, this has been bloody lifted. Ringing this. some bells, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it, this is sometimes the way, isn't it, that people don't get the credit, but it's like those in the know, they know. If you know, you know, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, and, and um, God bless uh, you, Kitty, for, for this public service, because it's, it's, it's great to get some of that out there, raise some awareness for the traffic and, and for the, you know, my film thing. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, listen, we are fighting these little injustices here at Calling Kitty. And, um, you know, some people have got, podcasts that have got messages and 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 um you know um important uh themes and and really really does make you think but for me what i like to do is just um it, it's the little things do you know what i mean sweat it's, the small um, stuff absolutely sweat it yeah you you do you really do because otherwise you miss those little opportunities to get yourself really anxious um <laughs> and, and 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 that that would be that would be a shame wouldn't it if, if we miss that yeah, mm. I, I feel that would be a missed opportunity. As I say, bless you for, 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 for your good work there. I'm doing what I can, Treasure. I'm doing <laughs> what I can. Now, um, what, 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 have you, um, what have you been up to? And what have, you, have you got anything going on that I can kind of help you with today? Yeah, of course. Um, so I've been, uh, at, at the moment, I mean, do you mean professionally or personally? I mean, whatever is... Um, Whatever's troubling you, whatever you... Uh, I, I loved what you said at the beginning because I think that we... Sometimes what happens is, and, and, and you'll know this, a lot of me listeners will know this, but um, I'm obviously working on different spiritual planes all of the time. So we're all connected, cellularly connected. That's my... And, and it's just a case of being tuned in to right frequency. Um, everyone's got the capability to do that. Um, but the, I feel like there is something that is that's just like a pebble in your shoe, Carl. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Would you, would you say that that was a accurate? Absolutely. It's very perceptive that you have picked up on that because I haven't been sleeping well mm. for, for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I, I shudder to think what I look like, but because um, I'm, I'm a, normally I'm like a four hours, you, you know, the recommended that you get every night for yeah. without fail. I'm lucky if I'm doing, you know, half an hour to three quarters at the minute. And what it is, Kitty, is that outside my flat, um, there, there's a group of youths that congregate outside the flat till, till all hours of the morning, and it, it's become oh. a real problem, it really is. Bloody hell. Now, have you been out there at all, Carl? So, I have. That wasn't, you know, much to my chagrin, I must admit. Um, because I, before I went out, I 
Googled how to disrupt noisy neighbours, as mm -hmm. you would or anyone would do in that situation. Uh, and I went to my favourite website, which was um, uh, .gov.uk, which is where I get all my information from. And they yeah. said, um, before ringing the police or anything like that, just go out and talk to them. Um, and I, I wasn't really happy with that because um, I, I'm not a policeman um, or a, a very sort of brave man. So right. I didn't really want to do that. But I, I was kind of left with no other option. So eventually I did go outside and I spoke to the ringleader. Um, and I, I could tell that he was a ringleader because he had um, like, a, like a headdress made out of a feather duster and a tea towel. Um, right. So I, I said to him, you know, pack it in. I've got work in the morning. Uh, and then he said, I respect that you've got work in the morning, but that is the life that you chose. Which I, you know. Oh, that, I bet that smarted, did it? it? Did that sting a little bit? It, it did. I thought to myself, I thought, young man, in, a, in just a couple of years, you'll be in this position and you'll, you'll be faced with somebody saying to you, that's the life that you chose. And, you know, I really took my time and I thought about it. And um, I, I, in the end, I decided to just sack off work and went out and got mashed up with the teenagers instead. Brilliant night. Right. I mean, I, listen, I think that that is probably the best course of action. Yeah. If you can't beat them, join them, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we had a, we had a bit of this trouble with the, on our cul-de-sac. They realised that this was a, a nice little place to come. I mean, obviously, Ted next door, he's 93. He was actually... Um, dealing quite a lot of marijuana at that point. So I think that's why they were coming round, to be honest. But um, what I ended up doing is getting a tray, taking a couple of cups of coffee out, a couple of bourbons, and, and going and just having a chat with them. Now, obviously, it's a bit of a different demographic. It's a bit of a different dynamic. But it feels like you've gone out there and you've learned something that you didn't think you would learn, Carl. Yeah, very much so. Lots of new slang. Um, yeah, lots of new sound. And I mean, it was, I mean, it was actually me who wrote the original lyric. Um, I believe that children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Now, <laughs> did I get any credit for that? I bloody didn't. And that's why I feel, you know, like, I, my heart goes out to those people that, you know, the, un, the unsung bloody heroes of culture. Um, but you, it, it sounds like you went out there maybe, um, I, w I wouldn't say looking for a fight because I feel like you've gone out there and gone, come on, lads. Come on now. I mean, what time was this? Two, three o'clock in the morning, was it? More like five o'clock. Five o'clock in the morning. Try that size. I mean, would it, is it at all possible that they were actually up and getting ready, well, just getting, getting everything ready that they needed to go and do their hedge fund job for the day? I'd, I'd like to believe that, Kitty, but uh, you know, a lot of them were skateboarding. Right. So... Yeah, I mean, it, it is... There is a new breed of like um, the, the city guy, obviously still coked up, but not all, not necessarily wearing a suit. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of these young guns they can be hackers. Uh, I mean, you know, our, our Carl, uh, different Carl to you, obviously. Um, he, 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 that's my sister's eldest, um, and he, uh, he, he's gone to work for, um, he's gone to work for Microsoft. Um, and you know he he is probably on about I don't know about 50, 50 grams of, of, of smack a day um, yeah. and, and that is written into his contract treasure you know that that's that's written into his contract so that is what they're doing now they're trying yeah. to attract the very best minds um, to skateboarding and, and a, oh no Mike to the yeah. Microsoft yeah well yeah to, I mean like let's cross the streams you know from half pipe to spreadsheet. It's that kind of, it's that kind of vibe, isn't it? Um, so have they been back since you went out and got mashed, with, mashed up with them? Well, yeah, I mean, that was my first and biggest mistake, really, because now I'm sort of one of the boys and uh, they come back every night and I'm like, guys, you know, it was great fun. Had a lot, you know, obviously we went out and had a lot of fun and we um, went skateboarding to the, to the, uh, in the wreck. Uh, and then yep. we also went to Costa after that just to kind of, you know, chill out a bit. Uh, yeah. But now they're coming back every night and they're like, Carl, that was the best hang we've ever had. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I mean, what they're, doing, they're, what they're doing is they're, they're calling for you. Yeah. You remember much. when people used to, that's, that's what we used to do, we used to call for somebody, didn't we? And yeah. I mean, Carl in, you know. Yeah, are you, are you coming out? Maybe you might sit yourself on the handlebars of one of their tiny bikes. Um, and that could be a new experience for you, couldn't it? 
Um, yeah, I, I suppose I could. I, I would be reticent because I heard a story about a friend of mine, his dad, uh, who will rename, re- remain nameless. Um, mm-hmm. His name is Craig. And he, he, um, he was accidentally left at a uh, supermarket when he was a baby. Um, oh. In the little bit where you put the babies. Uh, and he was abandoned there by accident. But then he, nobody realised for about 30 years. So he grew up in the supermarket. And he's, over time, he, as you can imagine, he started to meld with the, um, with the trolley. So now he works there as a reduced uh, item section. Right. But I wouldn't want to go on the front wheel, you know, front handlebars, lest that happen to me. If you, if you see my... Yeah, uh, no, I actually see... That's a very, very reasonable um, fear to have. Um, I mean, one thing about that is... I guess he'd be the first to see everything on the reduced to clear shelf, wouldn't he? You always have to look how to make lemonade when you do get lemons. Um, yeah. And that, that would be one... Th- I mean, that would be my first thought. Like, you're not waiting till the end of the day, are you, for the yellow stickers? Sure, but lemons are rarely reduced. Fresh items rarely reduced these days it's that's it that that is very very true yeah that is very true so maybe you just you well even just even your perishables or your non-perishables you're just looking for for the discount but um it sounds like um i'm gonna call you carl the catastrophizer okay. just for this just for this one just while we do this little bit of work on you just to realign your molecular structure within within your within your mindset um it sounds like I mean, what I'm hearing is, uh, what I'm hearing is, uh, the, the, these lads, they said it was the best hang they ever had. I mean, what a compliment, Carl, but it's yeah. almost like the closer people get to you, the more you want to push them away. Do you know Very what I mean? So, yeah. And that is a fear of inti- intimacy, which we all have. Um, and it may be that um, some profound conversations, philosophical conversations happened in that Costa. Um, not, maybe. Not, not, I, I mean, no. not to dis- not to disagree with there, Kitty, but it was it was more is things like why do they put them in glasses when it's co- coffee? Do you know what I mean? Like with the lattes, it was it was stuff like that. And I, I, if I'm honest, towards the end of it, I got a bit bored, and I went, it's, it's a point of difference, isn't it? It's a USP that separates them from your Neros and your Starbucks. Um, yeah. You know, but I, I mean, I mean, it is the glass actually a metaphor for all of our lives? Should we be? Should we all be? Should we all be tipping our thoughts a bit more into, yeah. into? Yeah, uh, right, okay. Because the cardboard and the lid, it keeps us contained, doesn't it? Whereas, let's be open. Let's be, like you say, let's uh, let's see let's see each other a bit more. I don't know. Perhaps I should, because um, I've got their numbers now, all, all the lads. Maybe I should um, text Nathan. He's the ringleader. And just be like, look, I'm sorry about that glass thing. I've kind of got a new perspective on it now. And, um, you know, I can see that it's, there's a bit more going on there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what it, what work you've got to get up for. Uh, like, obviously, you, you, you know, maybe you could incorporate these experiences that you're having with the hanging with the lads. Um, and a bit like Rumpelstiltskin, spin that into gold. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, to, to be fair, my, my day job, well, I call it day job, I'm a, I'm a professional, famous touring comedian, so actually I didn't really have to get up until about sort of four o'clock that afternoon anyway, so. Right, OK. Oh, it, we're, we're unpacking it all now, aren't we? So you're actually a comedian, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm oh. uh, doing a tour of the world. You, oh, brilliant, you're doing a tour of the world. Oh, uh... Going all the places, Portsmouth, Southampton... Edinburgh, Wales. Oh, Stockton. I mean, it just sounds so glamorous. It, it, it sounds so glamorous. Skip to um, as well, probably go there. And, and, and do you do you do you enjoy doing that treasure? I, I, hey, absolutely. I mean, it's you know, it's it's my job, but it's also my passion. You know, very much. Yeah. So I, I get out there, I talk about all the main things. I go, I go, who's drinking? You know, things like yeah. that. So, <laughs> you know, that that's what comedians do, isn't it? Do you know? What? I would love to come along to one of your. Um, one of your things that you do. What 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 you do? What what's your next thing that you're doing? Well, my next show. It's, uh, well, I mean, it's funny you should mention that, Kitty. I've got a, sh- a show on Friday um, in in Brighton at the what the, this Friday? The, the Friday, the eighteenth of October. Yeah. The eighteenth. Oh yeah, my yeah. god! Because th- th- this is this is out on the the Thursday, the seventeenth. So 
This is oh, this is this couldn't have worked any better. This could it? I, I love it when Destiny um, takes the front seat. She puts her seatbelt on and she goes. She she says, "Strap in, lads. We're going." That, that's mad, isn't it? Because I, I imagine there'll probably be a couple of bad seats that will go. Oh, you, you plan that and you organise it. Not not at all. No, not, that is not that that would be cynical. And we, I don't tend to have cynical people tuning in to, to, to watch or listen to Colin Kitty. So would you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel bloody bold doing this and I, and I know that um, I know that Keith, who works in the butchers, will be shaking his bloody head over the lamb chops at this point. He'll be thinking, she's cheeky. Uh, but I'm thinking that I just want to invite myself round. For the for the show on Friday? For the show, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I'd be happy to have you there, yeah. Find something for you to do, like a bit of sweeping up or... Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, uh, you should see me with a broom. I, I'm, t tell me all the details, tell all of our listeners all the details, because we, we'll probably get a coach load of us to come down, Treasure. Fantastic. Well, yeah, it's, um, so it's a comedy competition called the Carcassonne of the Year Comedy Competition, and it's just a way to make money for charity and to have just a, a God's honest, you know, um, just fair competition that mm -hmm. um, only I can enter, so only I can win, uh, just to sort of... You know, even though I am a, a famous touring comedian, any opportunity just to raise a profile is always um, something that you should take. So, yeah, it's a competition that only I can enter and uh, be making money for charity. Uh, and, you know, if, if people got a problem with that, then, you know, I, I would say, she got a problem, she got, a pro got a problem with raising money for charity. I don't think that's very good. Yeah, I, I mean, we, could, we yeah, exactly. That is, you'd be really caught with your pants down if you were actually trying to, um, trying to denigrate this night to raise vital funds for charity and it does remind me i mean one thing we've not touched on here is the fact that um me and your family go quite a way back and i do remember when you were running the egg and spoon race and what you did is you got a, a big plank of wood and just knocked all the other children out of the way and did that egg and spoon race and you won that egg and spoon race yeah. and so nobody could deny that that was only fair and so i feel like there is a bit of a there's a lovely kind of beautiful moment where you bring in a childhood experience into your into your grown up life. Very much so, and you know, I would just you know, to anyone who says, "Oh, you can't just keep going around cheating and you know, securing an outcome," I would just say the results speak for themselves. So mm -hmm. you know, you cannot lie with the data. That's exactly. what I always say. Exactly. I, every like twelve years in a row, I won that egg and spoon race. Mm -hmm. I won, you know, I'm untouchable. People were frightened to compete against me. Yeah, because then you would win. So yeah, and you know it is. Uh, you're always gonna get. Um, you're always gonna get a few people who are a little bit salty. Yeah. You know, you're gonna get. There's jealousy. There is jealousy, and you know, all I would say is just try harder. Yeah. You know, that, that's do whatever that's, it takes. Absolutely. Yeah. Do whatever it that, takes. That's what you. That's what you have to do. And, and really, if you can't dig deep and find the gumption like Carl Kazana has, then really you've got to look in the mirror and really ask yourself. Um, you know, uh, look in the when, mirror. When did and, I get and, this mirror? I don't remember. Well, yeah, exactly. Did I mean, it? Um, it could could it been Home Sense or was it the Middle Isle at um, Little? Yeah, because it's got a Spider Man hanging off it. These are the questions, aren't they? Yeah, it all comes back together. It really does. So. For anybody listening today on Thursday the 17th, your show is happening tomorrow, Friday the 18th. And tell me where it is again, Treasure. It's uh, at the Actors in Brighton at the bottom of Kemp Town. Uh, doors 7.30, show 8 o'clock. Uh, and we'll be going through right into the small hours of the, of the morning till 10pm. Lovely. Yeah, because I would need, you know, I... I um, I'd have to be doing me. Um, I'd have to be doing me face mask at ten thirty, um, and I'd have to be doing me, me infrared um, collagen um, collagen mask at, at ten forty five. So that puts me nicely on schedule. Brilliant. Okay. Well, we will put a note in the show notes uh, to all of your socials. Um, come and join us because it looks like I'm I'm getting involved. I mean, <laughs> listen. Some people say to me, Kitty, how do you? How do you get clients? How do you get work? How do you generate, you know, the, the, the stuff that you do? And this is it. You've just seen it in action. I've just invited myself along. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you just have to do that, don't you? Okay, sometimes people are going to go, no, that's not appropriate. That's a bit forward. But y you don't know if you don't ask, do you? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, the worst case scenario is that somebody says no. And the best case scenario is that somebody says yes. And then the worst case scenario is that somebody says, stop asking me, I'm going to take legal action upon yeah. you. 
Uh, we, well, we, we listen. That is something that I've come across many, many times. So uh, you know, like. Uh, if, if you need any help with any legal guidance, I mean, I've got restraining orders circulating. You know, a lot of them do actually expire in 2030, and that's when I'll just get I'll get on the treadmill again again with it. I heard um, that Jamie it, Oliver has a, a direct debit for restraining orders against you, so that there's always one. Yes, that's, yes, that's in effect. Yeah. Well, he has found a loophole there in that when one expires, it just kicks into the next. But there is actually a 20 minute period. Yeah, there's a 20 minute period and I, I, I found the loophole within the loophole um, in, in the legal system and I've managed to kind of hack through to that and that I, I, listen, we'll probably have to cut that out um, in the edit, Dave. Uh, Dave will edit this down in his shed afterwards. What we yeah. do is we actually cut the tape and then tape it together like they used to in the, in the old days um, and so we'll just cut that bit out. Um, but don't you worry, I, I'll, I'll, I'll survive. Would, I, I just, you know, if this is going to get cut anyway, I just want to say it's very commendable that you've been able to do that with Jamie because if there's anything that he should know about in his line of work, it's expiry dates. Right. Okay. And it's this. It is. It's that level. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, this is this. What we've got here is like a little amuse bouche. It's like a little, you know, when you go into sometimes if you're really posh and you go into Sainsbury's or Waitrose, you'll see somebody there with a little tray and they'll have just little sample bits. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, was a little sample of the wit and the uh, we're joining dots and we are, um, you know, th this is the mind that we're working with. Come and join us in Brighton. I'll be on the mega bus um, passing through um, Birmingham, Milton Keynes. Get on the mega bus on the way down. We'll probably be having a party. It'll turn into a party and join join us in, in Brighton because that, that's that's what it looks like. It is happening. I'm so glad that you called Carl. Oh, thanks so much for picking up. Like the, I've tried a lot of other times, and it's just gone straight through to answer phone. So I it's, don't know what happened there. But no, it's so busy. We've got one of those old-fashioned switchboards, and sometimes you know I've, I've got um, it, who, who's who's on the thing today. It it's Miriam. She actually plugs in. You know, she's got it. She's got the actual board there. She's plugging in um, the phone calls as they come in, and you know she's got a, she's got a repetitive strain injury in her wrist don't know how she's got that but um that's why sometimes it doesn't quite connect so if anyone else is having problems and i'm sorry if you've had problems getting through just persevere and that's what that's what carl did today thank you so much treasure <laughs> thanks so, thanks so much for, for uh, everything and i'll see you on the friday the 18th of october cheers kitty i'll see you there treasure ta -ra! See ya. <laughs> Oh, wasn't that lovely? Bloody hell. Do you know what? Don't say we don't give you out here on Calling Kitty. All right. We're, we're dropping, we're dropping truth bombs. We're dropping, we're dropping um, nuggets of wisdom, pearls of joy. And, and if this has got you through a difficult dog walk today, or maybe hanging out the washing, or maybe burning that mattress because there were certain stains on there that could have been incriminating, then I hope that you've got those jobs done. As I always say, you've got your podcasts that are two or three hours, and that's where you get a long journey done. But this podcast is just a, it's just like a little, it's just like a little footnote there, just ready to get you through those smaller tasks. And I hope that we've done that today. Listen, I've been Kitty Cassis. You lot have been gorgeous. From the bottom of my colonic, to the very tips of my acrylics. This has been Calling Kitty and I'll see you next time. ta -ra! See ya. ta -ra. Bye. Like, Bye. follow, subscribe. Sign your life savings over to Calling Kitty.